If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake, baked a cake, baked a cake. If I knew you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. How'd you do? How'd you do? How'd you do? In 1950, Harry Truman was in the White House. New York won the World Series. Gasoline was 18 cents a gallon, and the Dow Jones hit 235. And on November 28th, the Animal Care Panel met for the first time in Chicago. 75 members attended, and Dr. Nathan Brewer was elected as the first president. So we decided in 1950 that we would invite people from around this country and in Canada and uh, uh, have a meeting and uh, uh, see if we can spread the information that we were getting. And it was a successful meeting, and they decided to uh, meet annually. The next year, the proceedings were published and made available to the greater animal care community. I um, went to my first meeting in Chicago in 52, went out on the train overnight, and uh, arrived there with modest night's sleep, <laughs> and then we went to the meeting. I held a variety of offices, and in 1968 I was president. And <clears throat> Being chairman of the gala committee has been a very interesting experience for me, especially since my budget is within a thousand dollars of what the budget was for the whole ALAS the year I was president. <laughs> In 1955, the office and national convention moved to New York City. The animal care panel began to recognize affiliate organizations and membership grew to over 200. The next year marked the beginning of the Charles A. Griffin Award for demonstrated outstanding accomplishments in improving the quality of care and use of animals in biological and medical research. In 1957, the National Office moved to Chicago and shared office space with the National Society for Medical Research. Uh, when I really became involved uh, was, I believe, in 1959 when the national meeting was in Washington, D.C. Uh, my boss at the time was uh, Dr. Bill Gay, and uh, he was very much involved in arrangements for the meeting and uh, the program and, and that sort of thing. Nineteen sixty saw the use of germ-free animal stocks, which were free of interfering infectious disease agents. In 1961, the Animal Technician Certification Board was established, and the first certification exam was given with 70 technicians certified. Also in 1961, Joseph Garvey was hired as the full-time business manager. The next year, he was promoted to executive secretary. In 1966, the Laboratory Animal Welfare Act was passed by Congress, and the Animal Care Panel had grown to 1,911 members and 21 branches. In 1967, the Animal Care Panel officially changed its name to the American Association for Laboratory Animal Science, and ALAS membership surpassed 2,300. I just want to celebrate In 1971, the journal Laboratory Animal Care changed to Laboratory Animal Science. The 1973 National Meeting in Miami was a five-day event. Also that year, the use of national standardized technician exams began for ALAT, LAT, and LATG. I went to my first national ALAS meeting in 79, and that was in Atlanta, Georgia. The animal care programs have improved significantly over the years. Uh, I do remember the first ALAS certification manuals uh, that came out, and, and those were given to us at our facility, actually, even back in 78. And, uh, that was probably part of what got me involved in ALAS, too, was that, you know, the certification process. These are the days of miracle and wonder. This is the long distance call The way the camera follows us in slow-mo The way we look to us all In 1980, most commercially produced rodents were raised in barrier facilities in pathogen-free status. 
Also, the first transgenic mouse strain was reported. Donald Keene became the executive director in 1983. The next year, ALAS initiated the Joseph J. Garvey Award for Outstanding Accomplishments in Administration, Education, or Support Programs. Congress amended the Animal Welfare Act in 1985. In 1986, ALAS relocated to Cordova, Tennessee, a suburb of Memphis, and membership soon grew to 4,452. In 1993, Dr. Steele Mattingly served as interim executive director for approximately six months. Later that same year, Mike Sundag came on board. 1998 saw a record-setting 8,994 members with 48 branches and 19 affiliate organizations. In 1999, the foundation became a separate nonprofit organization and the national headquarters moved to the new facility in Memphis, Tennessee. ALAS is proud of our shared past. Today we have 9,729 members. Included in that number are individuals who represent 674 different institutions and commercial companies. And we are international. ALAS represents lab animal professionals from over 32 countries around the world. We're excited about the future and the many challenges that are still ahead of us. We know that tomorrow will be a better place for everyone because of what we're doing today.